Hello and welcome to Give Yourself Some Leeway, the brand new podcast for high achievers with me, Eugene Lee. Join me as I talk about all things from dealing with work-related stress, burnout, and reinforcing your physical, mental, and emotional well-being for a more sustainable and enjoyable work-life balance. I hope that you enjoy this episode, and if you do, please hit like and subscribe. So let's move on to what we'll be covering in this episode. So over the next few episodes, I'll be talking about the life-changing lessons that I've learned from my experience recovering from burnout and the unexpected journey it took me on. Now, I've learned an awful lot about burnout and about myself over these last few years on my burnout journey. For those of you new to my content, I initially burnt out back in 2019 with the onset of symptoms as far back as 2014, which should give you an idea of how early on you could identify symptoms of burnout to prevent it in the first place. But we'll get to that later on. So on this journey and the whole burnout recovery process, I've learned an awful lot about what burnout really is, what it means, how to recover, and I've also learned, amongst other things, just how isolating and alone it feels to go through the burnout recovery process. Yes, it can be raw, it can be uncomfortable, and it can make you question some of your core beliefs. But part of that process opens your mind and awareness to areas of your life where you probably didn't realize you were depriving yourself and those around you. So the aim of today's podcast is to share some of the things that I've learned in the hope that perhaps some of you might listen to this and recognize the symptoms within yourself and be able to do something about it. Or equally, some of you listening to this might find it helpful and avoid slipping into burnout in the first place. So if any of these things are achieved, then my work here is done. Now my next biggest lesson was learning that prevention is better than cure. It sure seems to make common sense just saying that, but I wish I had known how to prevent burnout in the first place rather than pursue the journey to recovery. The recovery journey is long, multifaceted, and it can take anything between one to three years. So similar to any physical condition, let's just say, let's just say a sports injury. It's much easier to train and to take countermeasures in training to prevent injury than it is to recover and go through rehabilitation with a broken arm or a leg. So the best way to prevent burnout is by managing the stress and the early warning signs of burnout before it down spirals and to develop healthier habits for a better work-life balance. This was the key to my recovery process and even helps with me managing my stress levels to this day. So my advice to you if you haven't been listening to the previous episodes or are about to stop listening now, at least leave with this. It is absolutely essential for you to prioritize your needs. Learn to look after yourself at work and at home. And learn to recognize the symptoms of stress and the early warning signs of burnout before it progresses to full-blown burnout. And this may not only be helpful for you, but you could see it in a work colleague, a family member or a friend, if you see them Uh, with extreme fatigue, uh, maybe a behaviour change that they just seem exhausted. Um, Maybe you could help recognise early signs of burnout for them and help them too. It is critical to ensure whether, you know, whether you're at home or at work, 
uh, you need to make sure that you're meeting your basic physical needs. Sometimes, especially let's say if you're working at home, you might forget to take regular breaks. Um, now, whether you are at home or at work, it is critical to ensure that you are meeting your basic physical needs. And I don't want to sound like, you know, I'm harping on about these pure common sense things that you probably hear all the time. But I wouldn't be reiterating them if I didn't feel like they were lacking in our hectic lifestyles. Because I for one know for sure that I definitely was not meeting my basic physical needs. Especially while I was spiraling out of control. For instance, making sure that you're eating well. That not every second meal is a pot noodle. Uh, that you're limiting your refined sugars and that you're trying to prioritize getting fruit and veg into your diet. Making sure that you're hydrated. Make sure you get enough water. Taking regular breaks. And I know this is one that many people are guilty of because uh, it's very easy to get caught up in something and not take a break. But it is important to take a break so that you can prioritize getting enough water, getting a good healthy meal, uh, going for a nice walk out in nature. And try to take part in activities that you enjoy. Uh, let's say out of work having hobbies that you do look forward to doing that help you to enjoy living. It could be taking the dog for a walk. It could be singing, dancing, gardening, playing board games, playing video games online with friends, be skydiving the world is your oyster some of my favorite outlets are going for long walks like in the forest or along the beach playing music or meeting up with friends and just you know throwing a frisbee around or kicking the ball around just it really helps to clear the mind now another great way to help manage your stress levels and also release endorphins is by doing moderate intensity exercise. And whether that's by going to the gym or by dancing or going for a run is entirely up to you. My go-to activity is strength training because it only takes about 40 to 60 minutes two or three times a week. and it helps me stay on top of staying hydrated and uh, feeling accountable to eating whole foods. Other key areas of meeting your basic physical needs include prioritizing sleep, making sure that you're not staying up half the night and only getting four hours sleep. Try and aim for that seven to nine hour sweet spot. Practicing gratitude. It's a great way of making yourself uh, more grateful for everything around you and thinking more positive. It is also important to maintain social connections or make social connections and to spend more time with family and friends because whether you're introverted or extroverted, it is important to maintain these connections because as you burn out, you start to become more distanced and detached. So it is worth making the effort to make these connections with people. Well, I hope you liked this episode and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, subscribe to the show. Because it makes sure that you don't miss out on new episodes. And it also helps me because... It increases the rankings of the show a little bit, which of course makes it a little more easily found by other people who may like it just as much as you. And if you didn't like this episode or anything about the show in general, or if you have any ideas or suggestions or just feedback that you want to share, shoot me an email, eugene at leeway.ie and let me know what I could do better or just what your thoughts are on what you'd like to see me do in the future. I read everything myself, I'm always looking for new ideas and constructive feedback. So thanks again for listening to this episode, and I hope to hear from you soon.